Assalamu alaikum, hello, hi, jambo, namaste, ni hao, welcome to the channel, train with Z. So I'm the first British Muslim in the United Kingdom to complete two Guinness World Records on the freestanding mountain in the world called Kilimanjaro. And today I would like to summarize my full seven day trek on summiting Kilimanjaro and completing the two Guinness World Records. I would also like to talk about my passion that I have for martial arts and training in self-defense. My journey started when I was 15 years old and I wanted some discipline in my life. I needed to be active and stay fit. So I decided to join a Muay Thai kickboxing club I would never forget the feeling and the emotions I had on the first day when I attended this gym, seeing punch bags and gloves and pads and you know it was it was really scary. But you know, it wasn't the end of the world because that was the best decision of my life was to enter that gym and make a commitment to myself to train on a continuous basis. So I was welcomed by my instructor Mo and we started our journey together. I trained at that gym for seven years. I loved everything about Thai boxing because it's actually working the seven limbs of your body. So you've got your kicks, your knees, your punches, and your elbows. The pad work, the bag work, the core work, the endurance, the strength, everything together. It really molded me and really supported my mental health. And it was a, a, a like an escape for me to get away from the world and to go into this gym and forget about everything and just focus on myself. I then went to university, so I missed a couple of years and I met my instructor again in a wedding. <laughs> he then asked me to come back to the gym which I met my friend and also my instructor and I started training again. The, the training then was quite different because I was a little bit older and there was a new place. I had a partner to train with, so it was actually more fun because obviously we were more sparring and we did a lot more pad work, there's a few more girls, so it was you know actually quite fun. So round about 15 years on, I was still volunteering and supporting in the gym. The instructors had noticed that this passion that I had for Thai boxing, so they decided to make me an instructor. I then volunteered in teaching for five years within the gym and taught so many different women martial arts skills. I then wanted to also sort of learn more about the outdoors. So my instructor introduced me to the Parsonage Reservoir, which is a local reservoir to my house. Flat ground walk, it was around about an hour all the way around. I was mesmerized by the views, the feeling, the peacefulness, the how, it, how it helped my mental health. We then decided um, as a group of people to then start this on a regular basis. Now, 10 years ago, there wasn't many people that were walking, so it was quite new. Um, we were working flat ground for a couple of months. Then my instructor found a place called Pendle Hill. And this was like a, around about 978 meters, uh, and it was all the way uphill, and then you sort of climb on top, and there's a thing called a summit, which is the highest point which you touch, and then you come back down. So I remember completing our first Pendle hike and the emotion and the feeling, it was so tough. Altitude training and walking uphill, it was very, very tough, but we accomplished it. And then every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we would get up. So instead of staying in bed, we'd be up early morning and go out for our hikes. We then had a checklist where we were conquering different places in the Lake District in Scotland and Wales. It was absolutely amazing. I remember climbing Scarfell Pike, which is the highest peak in England. We then went to Snowdon and conquered Snowdonia. Um, which is the highest in Wales. The last one was Ben Nevis. Now, unfortunately, um, due to the weather, there was 80 miles per hour wind and rain, so we couldn't actually reach the summit, so we had to come back down. I wasn't ready to give up, so I decided to go again with a friend, so we couldn't conquer the mountain. Um, we then, I then decided to go for the third time, um, and that's when I went with a group of people. It was like a mountaineering club. I joined them and yes, we managed to conquer this mountain. This means that I have conquered all three highest peaks in all in England. Um, this was before lockdown happened. Um, so during lockdown in 2018, I wanted to do something more than just climbing in England. Um, I sort of looked on Google, I came across the world highest OCR. Um, 
at the time I was sent an email I wasn't very convinced and I sort of just thought um, it doesn't seem that interesting there was a lot of information about it as well so it wasn't sold as well as I sort of expected so then I decided um, you know to just conquer the Yorkshire Three Peaks and the sort of smaller walks but instead of working on sort of the altitude and the uphill motion sort of conquering the highest stuff I sort of decided to conquer the the miles so you know doing 36 miles doing 42 miles and sort of worked on that as a, a mission in 2020 unfortunately lockdown and covid hit and i remember for th you know for the after about three months after lockdown my mental health was severely affected i cried for around about three days straight i was i was at home and i just cried and cried I didn't know why I was feeling this way and all these emotions. I then decided to sort of do something, but I didn't know what to do. Obviously, being locked down inside the house, not being able to get out um, to, go to, to do anything, it was it was tough. Um, so these tears kept rolling, kept rolling. And my mother, I remember speaking to my mother, um, who I adore and love to bits. Um, she said to me, she was, why are you crying? And I was like, I don't know, mom. I just feel so emotional. I've never felt this mental health sort of issues before this severely affected me and she said to me she said all it is is you've not been to the gym and I was like oh my god you know because the training and the, the martial arts training and being in that gym environment was my comfort zone that was something that I loved to do and that was giving myself time but during lockdown being stuck at home and not being able to get out for so many months it was clearly affecting me mentally physically and emotionally but when my mom sort of told me this it, it the light bulb moment it was like wow is that it it's just because I can't go to the gym so you know I had a problem now I was finding the solution so what can I do to resolve this problem so I decided to go out and buy some gym equipment unfortunately everything has sold out worldwide I was like so annoyed that I couldn't buy a you know some dumbbells so I went to eBay and I found some which were very old school they were 250 pounds and I thought to myself do I do I not now because my mental health was so badly affected the only thing I could think of at that point is to work out and lift some weights so yes I purchased this equipment it came to my home the first day I did my first deadlift I remember this positive energy running through my body it was running through my bones and I felt myself again that's when my journey started in training so I started training at home so lockdown started easing off I then went to a gym I met Brian a fantastic instructor I also met my instructor Ian who does martial arts so mainly the two instructors that have really helped and supported my journey so thank you guys and um, because it's been really helpful all the tips and tricks and really pushing me that's really supported my journey as well in climbing Kilimanjaro I then received an email from the world highest OCR explaining this challenge that has never been attempted before and it was summiting Kilimanjaro but also completing the high, world highest obstacle course in the crater of this mountain. I thought to myself, mm, I'm only a martial arts instructor, am I going to be capable of doing this? It was a very big decision and I decided to have a chat because you know it was free and it was a Zoom meeting so I decided to talk to the organisers David and Rob and when we had this conversation I just felt this confidence and this empowerment and, and felt these emotions running through my bones and I knew that this is something that I'd like to conquer. Now a dream of mine from a very young age whilst hiking in the 10 years was to do Everest Base Camp and I was planning on doing this for my 30th birthday but unfortunately lockdown was announced one day before my birthday so that's something that I didn't actually you know couldn't actually do or go to so when this sort of opportunity arise I thought to myself should I or should I just you know stick to my dream but David and Rob had explained the full journey and I decided to sign up for this challenge um, and I signed up um, and 
initially I thought, I'll be okay, I'll be able to do it, it's only a hike up Killy and it'll be an obstacle course at the top. Didn't think about the sort of training that's going to be involved with this. Um, we had regular meetings um, on Zoom every two weeks. So there was 43 athletes from around the world and there were we had these meetings sort of discussing training and we were sort of still easing off lockdown but there was still a lot of COVID measures in place. So it was quite difficult and quite a stressful time for me. So the first of all, they were they were quite um, good actually. I really would recommend if anybody is like a marathon runner or obstacle course um, adrenaline junkie that sort of wants to do something different, then I would say that World Highest OCR is definitely the place to be because now I feel like part of a family. And it's amazing to meet such professional, down-to-earth organizers um, because I am very particular on who I work with and who I communicate with and I, I have to say that the professionalism that they have portrayed every step of the way they supported my journey um, and, um, and that's the only reason why I've actually accomplished this challenge as well. So the, so the organisers had planned for us to go to London, the Altitude Centre, to actually conduct a hypoxia testing for the lung capacity to see um, you know, how our lungs would actually survive at such high altitude at 5,895 metres. So I went to London and I met another few people that were actually conducting the challenge with me and I met an amazing woman called Can. Um, I remember the minute I met her and we smiled at each other and I could feel that connection and it was amazing because she has actually done Everest, yes, actual Everest and I've never met anybody who's done Everest and she has done all these other big mountains as well which I'll talk about in my other video that I'm going to do as an inspirational um, video because I have met such athletes and inspirational people that I'd like to make a separate video so keep a watch out for that on my YouTube channel Train With Z. So this altitude center had done a lot of testing on my lungs and we had this mask that we had to wear which oxygen was sort of and um, the amount of oxygen that was coming through was less and less and it should have tested in the lungs. Now the conclusion was that I would survive because I have done a lot of mountaineering for the last 10 years, I would survive the altitude, so that summit in Kilimanjaro, but I may struggle the, at the obstacle course because that was at that height. And obviously um, you'd stay at that height, then jumping around doing these obstacles at that height. So they sort of recommended to rent out this machine, which is 25 kg and it was quite big um, and then you know the mask and training on the treadmill with this machine and doing exercises now the cost was quite a bit so I decided to leave it at that point so I went back home and I set up a training plan I spoke to my instructor Ian and Brian and we set up a plan where I was training two hours a day this was endurance cardio strength flexibility uh, and then I also did um, altitude training so all the challenges that I had conquered a couple of years ago I conquered again in 2021 so in the space of six weeks so I did Yorkshire Three Peaks, Ten Peak Coldale Challenge, Scarfield Pike which is highest in England, Snowdon highest in Wales, Ben Nevis highest in Scotland all in six weeks um, and I also did a lot of other smaller mountains like Helvellyn, Striding Edge, Coniston Old Man I love hiking so for me it was like a walk in the park and the more I did the altitude training the more my lungs got used to the sort of up uphill trekking. I then decided to have another test at the Manchester Research Centre um, and that sort of concluded that I may need to sort of do a little bit of hypoxia training because that is another level, altitude is another level of training because you've got to acclimatise your body, not just for the hike, but to be in the crater for two hours to do these obstacle course. So I decided then to rent out this machine for a month. It came to my home address. Now I don't have a treadmill and I was under a house renovation so I couldn't use this at home. So I decided to take it to the gym. So thank you to JD Gym in Blackburn and Brian for supporting me in taking this machine to the gym and actually using it on the treadmill. So I trained in the mornings for one hour on this hypoxia machine. And then I also trained in the evenings where I did my endurance and my strength training. And then 
late in the evening, this is before I'm going to bed, I would do my yoga to just relax and, and you know, do the flexibility within the sort of muscles because I was putting a lot of strain on my body in training. So I had to sort of stretch it out and relax as well. So some days were quite tough some days were easy. I have vlogged my full three months of my journey on my YouTube channel, Train With Z, that's Z with a double E. So if you're interested to see what I got up to, then please subscribe on my YouTube channel.